Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. This week's video is a sheep in the landscape painting and this little adventure actually began with me working outdoors using some mixed media, some of my ink tents and watercolour markers to try and capture the view. <laughs> you can just see the sheep came over the brow of the hill of those trees. But when the sheep, I thought it was an empty field, but the sheep, as I said, came over the brow of the hill. And then I realised looking in the other direction, what a lovely scene, because I've got the sheep in the foreground and then the trees and then off in the distance, the rolling hills of Devon along the X Valley there. So there's some of the footage that I captured. And the sheep are kind of gradually changing position and, and moving around, going for these feeder bowls. So what I normally do here is I take a little bit of footage and also take a few still photographs. And then I kind of use the, those references to start to create a painting. And this was pretty much the scene I was going to depict. So I'm back at home now and I've got some A2 mixed media paper. And I'm starting this one with watercolour marker pen. And if you've seen previous videos, you know that I quite like this method for using the watercolour marker pen to create the line work very quickly. And of course, because it's watercolour, you can move that paint around a little bit if you want to. Later, it's really easy to cover up with acrylic. So it's a really nice, flexible way to get going. Now, quite often, I use Prussian blue to start my drawings. But today I thought I'd go with magenta just to change things a little bit. And I've started to put in the basic shapes of the first of the sheep. So although I think there were four sheep on camera that I showed you before, maybe even five actually, uh, I'm just going to go with three of the sheep here. And the plan is to have the sheep that I'm drawing at the moment, that one will just be standing there. And then the two sheep to the right, they were actually feeding in those blue plastic feeder bins and I don't want to include those in the in the painting so what I'm going to do is include the two sheep but they'll be partially hidden be behind a, a bush and some grass that kind of thing so it'll look um, you know like more of a natural scene hopefully so what I'm doing here as I draw the animal is I'm trying to ignore detail and I'm trying to put down just very simple shapes now, you know, you could start this process by just simply doing a series of rectangles and then refining that further. But, um, you know, I prefer in general to try and get the general shape of the animal. But I'm not being overly concerned, you know, with getting it, getting it exactly right. But at the same time, I'm, I am trying to be as accurate as possible. So it's that sort of delicate balance of kind of letting your, your hand and your brain kind of work automatically and almost subconsciously and kind of trying to replicate something of the feeling you got when you were up on top of the hill, but also trying to consciously make sure we get things reasonably well proportioned. So that sheep's not looking too bad in terms of proportion. So I'm just having a bit of a think now about where to put the second one exactly. Now, I do actually do a little thumbnail drawing sometimes. Um, I'll pop that one up on screen uh, for you now. And, you know, those little pencil drawings, little biro drawings, just help me to work out the rough composition of the piece. I don't always do that, but it is handy if you've got several animals and a landscape. Just to try and save yourself a little bit of time, a quick thumbnail will, you know, just let you know quite quickly whether the composition is going to work. And it's, it's obviously best to sort that out as early on in the painting process as possible. Now, one of the things I really enjoy about painting uh, sheep and cows is you know how they interact in groups so you'll often see them peeking around the corner or peeking around from behind another one and that's part of what appealed to me with this particular arrangement of these three sheep so although the two on the right were feeding in those uh, those feeder pots um, I'm going to use their posture and their body positions as if they're sort of casually feeding and just kind of like peeking around from from the, uh, the bushes that I'll put in. So I'm just sort of uh, popping in the right hand sheep there. You can see I've indicated the middle sheep already. And just with those few simple lines on the middle sheep, yeah, you know, there's no facial features at all, um, but you can kind of see, you can start to read the body language that the head's kind of dipped down and perhaps they're kind of peeking around from the, the braver member of the flock on the left. And here, this is what I'm, I was saying earlier, I'm just popping in an indication, just making this up really, 
a loose outline at, with random shapes of some kind of hedge and brush so that these two animals can kind of be partially hidden and then the main sheep on the left is standing a little more clear of that undergrowth. So there's our little group of animals and now we have to put them in their world. So we're up on top of the hills above Exeter in Devon and uh, yeah, a really nice view off into the distance. So I want to suggest a feeling of depth here, that there's a world beyond the field that these sheep are living in. And so to do that, I'm kind of introducing some trees and bushes here. And these will act as a framework to the distant landscape. And so having done that, I'm now starting to pop in very with loose sweeping lines, just the positions of the hills off in the distance. So there we go, there's our little composition. And hopefully you can see already that just with those, that simple bit of line work, there's a little bit of a sense of depth. The sheep are very clearly in the foreground and then the hills are through this frame created by the trees off into the distance. Now, while I was chatting away there, I used some ink tense pencils to put down some blue for the sky. And if you remember from a few weeks ago, I tried this for the first time, ink tense pencils, at one of the art classes I did. Uh, one of the guys who came along, he had some ink tense pencils and we were just trying them out to see how they worked. So I ended up buying myself a, a set of those and been really impressed with them, actually. They're, they're great, uh, great bits of kit. So as you can see, I was able to put in the line work and then with a quick spray of water and this nice, lovely big brush I've got, I could just move that colour around. And, you know, so, so it's a really, really quick way of covering big areas with, um, with colour. And then once the ink tense pencils are dry, then they're waterproof. So it, it's really good. You know, really, a little bit like working with acrylics. And that's really cool. And then in keeping with the line work that I put down earlier, I put down a little bit of uh, magenta from the pencils. And then with the spray of the water, you can see that that started to move around the watercolour paint I put down previously. And those two have blended together quite well. So that was also a little experiment I was doing to sort of see, well, how are these two things going to work together? Because I hadn't tried that before. So that seemed to work fine. So what I'm doing now is putting in a range of colours, some greens, some yellows, some oranges on these distant fields, still with the ink tent uh, pencils. And then just using the same damp brush, I haven't bothered to clean the brush and the water spray. I'm just softening all of those areas. So to, just to put in some quick washes of colour, get the white paper covered. And, you know, just topping up the brush with water, topping up the paper with water and just playing, really, trying to see what effects I can get. And then having done that, I'm now moving to the sort of middle ground, the closer uh, trees and bushes. And I'm putting the, pe uh, the pencil on a little bit more heavily now. And I'm also being a little more conscious of the directions of the brush, uh, the pencil strokes. So I'm starting to suggest some of the direction of growth of these trees. So just like uh, if I'm painting animals, I keep my brush strokes going along the lines, the contours of the bodies. In the same way with trees and bushes, we can, in general, have the pencil strokes going in the direction that the trees are growing. So they're reaching out for the sky, for the light, for the air, and uh, just helps to suggest a sense of form within those trees. You can see I'm being really loose, just holding the pencil at the far end from the, from the tip, uh, from the nib, and you know just using my wrist and arm to, and to put in these big, bold strokes. And look at the lovely range of tones and colors that just spraying with water and then moving the stuff around with a big brush gets you and it's so quick you know I've only been going for what uh, well probably it's nine minutes on the clock into the video now so probably used up about a minute or two out at the field so I've only been working away for about seven minutes or so um, and you know very quickly we're covering the majority of this A2 piece of paper and you know we're starting to get a sense of the picture coming together already so you know it's, it's a really powerful and quick way to put down colour establish the sense of composition and scene. So coming in on the on the field where the sheep are grazing and standing now, putting in a bit of yellow, a nice warm colour for the foreground, and using a similar technique that I used before for the trees and bushes.
Now for the foreground field, you can see that having put that layer of yellow down, now I've grabbed two pencils, each of a different color. I think I've got a blue and a green here. And I just thought I'd experiment with kind of mixing the colors on the paper by overlaying the different pencil strokes of different colors. And then again, with a wet brush, you can see it's a nice way to efficiently create a bit of variation in the color of the field. And if I happen to pick up a bit of those magenta watercolor lines that I put down on the sheet, that's not the worst thing in the world that could happen. You know, it introduces another color mix and adds a little bit of a brownie tinge uh, to the field. So generally speaking, when we're painting nature, you know, it's best to avoid just single blocks of color. Uh, it depends what you're doing, but uh, gen generally speaking. So covered the pretty much the entire paper, except for the sheep, with the ink tense paper, uh, pencils and the watercolor marker pen. And now I've switched to my interactive acrylic paint and I'm coming in here with some burnt umber. So the colors I've used so far really rather a bit of a time jump there just to uh, save you guys some, some watching time. But um, having used some rather vibrant colors in the background, I thought I'd just go the other way initially, at least with the sheep. And having used some dry brush to put in some tone in burnt umber for the shadow regions on the sheep, uh, I'm also coming in now with some yellow ochre added to that to kind of block them in and just introduce some of the, some tertiary colour for the sheep themselves. And now having done that, I'm coming in with a light blue, still with just the same. I've been using a half inch flat uh, synthetic brush for all of this. So notice I'm keeping the brush marks visible in the marks that I put down. And I'm kind of almost sculpting the shape of the sheep with my brush marks. So I'm, kind of, I'm following the contours of the animal's body, something I say almost every week, but I feel it's so important to help create a sense of three dimensions. And having done that on all three sheep, I've now switched to a lighter highlight. So I've added some more titanium white to the mix and I'm starting to create a sense of light falling on top of these sheep. So still no detail at all, you notice. We're just trying to build up the whole picture Get, it, get the white paper covered and then having blocked all of that in, start to create a sense of light and dark, shadow, tone, sense of three dimensions. And, and when I say that, mostly I'm, I'm talking about the sheep because the way I tend to work with my animals in landscapes is I focus on the animals and get them looking the way I want them. And then I try to make the landscape complement the animals in some way. And if that means I have to sacrifice a little bit of realism, then I'm happy to do that. Uh, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So while I was chatting away there, you can see that I've put in some bluey shadows now, which uh, often occur on the on the bodies of sheep where the white wool picks up some blue reflected light. And now I'm using a, blue, a similar blue on the brush to just overlay some purpley bluey clouds over the top of that ink tense background that I put down earlier. So over the X Valley, uh, I think it must be because the valley channels the wind uh, up from the sea all the way up the river. Um, but the, the cloud formations are constantly varying, you know, literally minute by minute to minute over the X Valley and you get some incredible colours and shapes and things. So it's a, it's a really great spot to sort of do landscape painting. And so on this particular day, there was a blue sky with kind of these kind of banks of linear, almost linear purpley cloud. But as I was putting those uh, cloud banks down, I was kind of rotating my brush and varying the pressure of the brush to automatically get some variation in the shapes and the edges and the, the texture of those clouds. So having done that on the clouds, I've now moved to the distant hills with another purpley blue, but with a different type of brush stroke now. Now I'm kind of keeping the brush strokes a little more linear and again, in keeping with the surface of the hills I'm painting. So having covered the, the paper with the, mostly with the ink tents and then put the sheep in, I'm now going back to the landscape and bringing that up to a similar level that the sheep are. So getting some acrylic down on top. And I'm keeping things very loose for this distant landscape. So to be honest, my original intention was to depict all the fields very lightly and very subtly but all the fields and the little hedges and things off in the distance, you, you know, you get this patchwork effect with the field 
uh, um, the hedge-lined fields which roll over the hills in England. But having done that quite loose treatment of the distant landscape, I actually found later on that it, it worked well enough as it was, and I didn't want to risk the viewer's attention being too drawn off into the distance. I still wanted the attention on the sheep. So what I've been doing since I completed the distant landscape is with rather rougher, more jagged up and down brush strokes. I'm now applying different colours, dark purples and magenta hinted purples to um, add a little more energy and a little more jaggedness and a little more raggedness to the mid-ground trees and bushes. So it's not just about creating a sense of depth for me. It's not just about cooler and warmer colours. It's also about the brush marks you, you use and the, how you use the brush so light and gentle dry brush off in the in the far distance but more energetic scrubby uh scumbling marks for the midground so here i'm just suggesting shadows and branches and things i'm not taking too much care i want a, an element of randomness in this and that random element will hopefully contrast quite well with the more precise rendering and modeling that I'll do on the sheep themselves later on. So as you can see, this particular video isn't uh, a real-time video. The actual painting probably took me about two hours or just over, so I thought it was better in this case to do a half-hour video and kind of give you the, the key bullet points. And hopefully you can see um, you know, what's gone on. If, if, if people really want to see the real-time version, then you know, let me know in the comments and I'm happy to upload it. I probably wouldn't do a commentary for that full two hours, though. Um, but if people really want to see it, then let me know and I will do it. OK, so having done some loose modelling on the sheep, I start, I've started to lose some of my initial drawing. And the initial drawing I don't take as being completely accurate. I don't assume that's the case. I'm always looking to correct. So I felt the need at this stage to just refine things a little further. So I'm going in now with a slightly narrower flat, uh, flat brush. I guess this one's about a quarter of an inch, six mil wide. And I'm just doing a little more drawing with a, uh, a deeper purple just to redefine the outlines of the animals and make sure they don't get lost in the mix. Um, it's nice to be loose when I paint, but I don't want to lose structure. I don't want to lose. I, I want the animal to fit, to look right and have the a anatomy to look right and feel like this thing could walk and move and stand correctly. So it's a delicate balance sometimes between looseness and precise definition. But what I'll do is, uh, as I move on in the painting, some of these newer marks will get lost, at least in part, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll sort of oscillate between looseness and definition. So I had that colour on the brush and I thought, well, I may as well use that and continue that into the foreground here for some of the shadows in the in the bushes that the, the two sheep are, are grazing on. And you can see also that by um, emphasising the outlines once again, that's brought the sheep forward. So already, hopefully you agree, those distant hills are looking a lot further away than the sheep are in the foreground. So we're going to have much stronger light, stronger, darker shadows on the sheep. And we're going to leave that distant sky and distant hills pretty much as they are, to be honest. So here's a clip of what I was talking about. Um, this is the scene once again. Just wanted to give you a look at, you know, so you can see what I'm referring to the whole time I'm painting. And as you know, if you've seen any of my videos before, I don't aim to capture the scene exactly. It's very much my version of it. I want to be inspired by the scene and I definitely want there to be some recognisable elements. But I want this to be my own thing. Now, having added some bluey shadows to this central sheep, I'm now coming in with the more precise 6mm wide uh, synthetic brush and adding some highlight colours there. And now I've moved on to the right hand sheep and coming back in with the yellow ochre a little bit. So the way I tend to work when I'm deciding on the colours for animals is I'll try to kind of let go uh, quite a lot early on and just sort of see what happens. And then I'll probably pull it back towards being a little more realistic and then push it away from being realistic again and again. So just like the looseness and the, and the precision of, of line we were talking about, there's this constant oscillation back and forth between colour as well. So I'm trying to always experiment between getting something which is effective and fairly realistic, but also trying to present something in a slightly different way to usual without pushing it you know, too far, hopefully. 
So I'm coming in again now with my bluish shadows for the right hand sheet. And the smaller brush, you know, I'm still trying to be loose with it and not be too fiddly. But obviously the smaller brush you have, then you can be a little more precise than uh, if you have a larger brush. Now the paint's more or less run out on the brush here, but I'm taking that opportunity to introduce some dry brush marks on the sheep to introduce a little bit of texture. Obviously sheep are covered in wool, so there's a myriad of different uh, textures and spindly bits and intertangled things going on. Um, so it just helps to suggest some of those. So just like with uh, looseness and precision, realistic and unrealistic colour, uh, I also oscillate back and forth between drawing and painting. So, you know, I will do some drawing at almost any stage in the painting uh, if, I, if I feel it's going to help the image, basically. And sometimes that help is just to help me see where I'm going to go with, with the painting that I do next by putting in some guidelines, as it were. And other times I just leave the drawing exposed. But the whole idea is that we're, we're building up the reality we're creating in, in layers. That's, that's, yeah, that's the idea, basically. So gradual incremental changes towards something that we're happy with. So having given sort of an extra layer of treatment to the middle and right hand sheep, I've now moved on to what is perhaps the main sheep of the picture. And I'm adding some sort of bluey purpley shadows onto the leg here. And, you know, it's sometimes difficult to see how well the, the colours I choose are going to work uh, early on. So, and, and they often don't come to sort of full fruition until I overlay them with perhaps a dry brush coating of a lighter colour. So that some of those uh, brighter colours show through the, the top layers. And other, other times, of course, it just doesn't work and I decide to go in a completely you know, different direction. But I always enjoy the, the sort of the mild adventure of trying something a little bit out of the ordinary. So I'm adding some uh, reddish brown here now. So I would probably have mixed that up with cadmium red, a little bit of cadmium, well, a little bit of cadmium red, some cadmium yellow and some of the ultramarine blue that I used earlier. And possibly a touch of titanium white there. So just continuing that. So you can see that the shadows on this main sheet now have got several colours in them. They've got the burnt umber I used right at the beginning. They've got the magenta watercolour marker hidden in there, but still peeking through in a few select areas. They've got the purpley shadow that I purpley blue shadow that I put down just a moment ago. And then they've got this reddish brown shadow as well. So I'm continuing that theme across the whole animal, including the neck and the, the head. And you'll notice that I'm spraying the paper with water periodically. And that's for two reasons. As you know, the interactive acrylics, if you spray them with water, even if they're touched dry, when you, when you do that, it allows them to be re-blended with other colours. So that's a great way to get interesting effects by just keeping them active with a little bit of moisture. But the other thing is just that ever so light coating of water on the surface of the paper, Just I find it helps the paint just flow so much better than if you try and put it down on top of uh, a dry surface and you can get much more expressive brushwork in that way. So again, once again, just like I did on the right hand sheep, I'm now using a little bit of dry brush, taking the opportunity that's been presented by the paint running out on my brush to just add a little bit of texture on top of this left hand sheep's head. Now, again, you know, there's a temptation here to get too fiddly, so I don't you know, I won't be spending too much time doing this and I may end up covering up some of the work. But sometimes you get just with those few dry brush marks, you can get something really cool. And so, it, you know, it costs so little time and so little paint. You know, I always think, why not give it a go and, and see what we get? But even here, you can see there's an element of drawing going on. The curved brush strokes or the straight brush strokes I'm making help to create a sense of form as they curve round the body and the leg of the animal. So having put the multicolored shadows in, you can see that you know, this is a highlight color I'm putting in here. So I'm reintroducing the sense of light that we perhaps lost a little bit um, with some of the intermediate layers of paint that I put down. So 
so the painting's starting to come together now. We've got much more modelling and work being done on on the sheep than we have on the plant life and things. But we've still kept things fairly loose. So what I'm doing here is I've introduced um, some nice dark shadows to the the undergrowth that the two right-hand sheep are, are nuzzling into and and look, you know, feeding on and so forth. And having done that, I'm now coming in with a big decorator's brush. This is like a two and a half, three inch brush. And I'm just using that to add some very loose highlight colors here. And tapping just the corner of that brush, you, know, you can get a huge variety of marks just by changing the angle of the brush uh, and just having very little paint on the brush. It's a great way to create quick texture and highlights. And then of course you can just immediately switch to broader scumbles or brush strokes like I'm doing now. So you can combine kind of wet in wet and dry brush painting at the, at the flick of the flick of a wrist. So, you know, really good fun to just stay loose this late in the stage of the painting. So another quick spray with the water bottle. And now I'm coming in with some brighter highlights. So we've got a uh, much more cadmium yellow and possibly a little bit of white, titanium white in the mixture here. And the great thing about the interactive acrylics is that when you do this kind of technique, let's say you were quite happy with the, the bush that you've got there, but perhaps some of the highlights went down too heavy. So for example, there's a big blob of yellow to the right of the right hand sheep's head, just sort of down to the right a little bit. And I think that's a little bit heavy, to be honest. Now with normal acrylic, once that's dry, really struggling to sort of manipulate it, you'd have to just cover it up. But uh, with the interactives, you don't have to operate under that time pressure. You can just, you know, just take your time and, uh, you know, quick spray with water. You can move that around a bit, soften it, lift it off. Um, so, yeah, it's really cool. Really good stuff to work with. I can't honestly remember at this point, as I, as I rewatch this footage back, whether I, I lost that heavy. Oh, I did. There you go. I, I jumped it in time, but I did soften that uh, highlight a bit. OK, so now having, you know, added a bit more definition to the, the undergrowth there, I'm coming back in on my sheet now with a small round brush. So this is allowing me to do some more delicate line work. And I'm coming in here with just some ultramarine blue. So just going back to a pure primary and just adding a little bit more definition. A few more precise lines here and there. Just to bring a little more drawing and a little bit more structure back into this left hand sheet. And of course, the tip of this brush can be used for the, the really fine details as well, like the eye of the sheep or the nostrils, uh, the mouth, the line of the lips. All of that stuff, a little round brush is, is you know, hard to beat, really, I think. Certainly when you're working on the scale that I am here, where the the head of the sheep is perhaps only, you know, two or three inches high. Um, so just those few lines have added just a little more definition that was required on this left hand sheep. So we're starting to bring the, the viewers focus onto the, the main animal. But before we get to into the final details, we need to add a little bit more detail to the mid ground of the plant life. So I've gone back to my flat brush here and I'm just popping in a select few branches and twigs peeking out through the foliage of those um, middle and foreground bushes and things. Now I'm coming in with a, a darker colour again, a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt umber to add key parts of definition to the eyes of the sheep. And now I'm coming in with an orangey yellow ochre mix to pick out the lighter parts of the eye and then adding more cadmium yellow to the top half of the eye there to give us a sense of light catching. So there's a better look at the finished painting. And hopefully you agree with me that there's a nice sense of depth and a weird sort of altered reality feel to this one. But hopefully you also feel that the sheep and the landscape are still fairly realistic. And these, th these animals could walk away, even though we've got kind of a weird colour scheme and weird lighting going on. Here's a close up of the sheep. And I'm really happy with the sense of looseness I've kept throughout this painting. So I hope you've enjoyed watching the video with me. Um, as usual, any questions at all, ask me in the comments below. Hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show. 
and thank you very much for watching.